Hello, this is Kaiyang Chan, and I'm a composer from Hong Kong. I'm really excited to be sharing with you a new recording of my work, Echoes of the Autumn Night, for two violins, recorded by the brilliant musicians from the Hong Kong New Music Ensemble, Amelia Chan and Vanessa Chan. This work is based on the Chinese poem "Autumn Night" by Tang Dynasty poet Du Mu, who lived in the ninth century. He has expressed in his poem the solitude and loneliness of a palace servant, and the translation goes as follows: Silver candles, autumnal glow, a chilling painted screen, with a small round fan of light silk gauze, she fans the flitting fireflies. On the palace steps, the sun the night cool as water. Laying down, she gazes at the stars of a cowherd and a weeping lady. The imageries of the poem, such as starlight and glimmering tracks of the fireflies, have inspired the shimmery harmonic trills in the violin's part, as featured throughout the piece. Let's have a listen. So when you hear these sounds in a piece, you can be imagining fireflies and stars in a chilly night. Sometimes these materials will be in the foreground suggesting the theme, and sometimes they are in the background accompanying other lines. And as you might have noticed, in these measures, the two violins have already exchanged in roles and echoed each other's materials. This is what happens very often throughout the piece, so that's something to look for. But there are also times where they will work together like a single instrument for dramatic and expressive purposes, and we can hear that at the local climax. Now let's talk about the theme. The thematic materials of the work are based on the Cantonese tonal contour of the poem. As you may know, Cantonese is a tone language that uses tones and inflections at different pitch levels to distinguish word meaning, and the same sound would mean very different things when it is pronounced with a different tone. A word or a phrase consisting of two or more Chinese characters is only meaningful in a melody when it is sung with the correct relative contour and interval. For instance, the beginning of the poem has the word "an" so silver candles, which creates a rising contour. And in the same line, the word "wa ping" paint the screen creates a falling contour. The rising or falling contours of these words also have to be in the right distance in order for people to understand them correctly. For example, if I set silver candles an so in a wrong distance, like an so, a unison interval like an so, or a reverse contour like an so, the word would be complete nonsense. It has been a recurrent endeavor for me to turn this test-setting constraint into creativity. I have employed this approach not only in my vocal and choral works, but also in my purely instrumental works like this one, using melodies with hidden text as a point of departure. In a way, you can think of this piece as a vocal work that can only be performed by the violins. To give you an example, here's the first line of the poem: "Ngan zhuk cao guang lang wa ping, silver candles, autumnal glow, and chilly painted screen." And the phrase has become the following melody. Sometimes the theme would be presented very directly, like what you have just heard. And sometimes it's rather subtle and presented pointillistically among the violinists, meaning that the player would engage in a kind of musical ping pong, with each of them playing a note from the melody and alternate among themselves. 
The transformation of the thematic material can be found throughout the work, and it should be fun to listen to. I hope you enjoy it, and that's what I would like to share with you about my piece.